remain standing as we take the second stanza as the national prayer. O God of creation, direct our noble course, guide our leaders right, help our youth the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, and living just and true. Great lofty heights attain to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to this and technologies for managing problematic soils in Nigeria. I would like to recognize the presence of our very special dignitaries who have come to grace this August occasion. First on my list, I have distinguished Senator Dr. Abdullah Yadamu, Chairman, Senate Committee on Agriculture. A round of applause for me. He's probably on this way. Also, I have Honorable Munir Baba Dan Abundi, Chairman, House Committee on Agricultural Colleges and Institutions. Next on my list, I have Honorable Muntari Dandute, Chairman, House Committee on Agricultural Production and Services. He's also probably on his way. Also, I have Honorable Uju Kinsley Chima, Deputy Chairman, House Committee on Public Procurement. His arrival. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dr. Ernest A. Umahie, Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. I have also on my list the Commissioner for Agriculture, Kaduna State, represented by Malam Yahu Kasimu. Next on my list is Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture, Sokoto State. On my list, again, I have Dr. Abiola Odedina, Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture, Ogun State. It's probably on her way. Next on my list, I have Dr. Glory Edet, Commissioner, Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture, Aquaibom State. Next on my list, I have the Executive Secretary, Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria, ably represented here by Mr. Salako Oluwafemi. A round of applause for me. Next on my list, I have Engineer Oluwa Toba Asana, representing Mr. Kalem Uso, Country Manager, Nigeria, and Deputy Managing Director, OCP Africa. Put your hands together for Next on my list, I have Professor G.I.C. Mwaka, who is the Vice President, Nigeria Institute of Soil Science. <laughs> on my list also, I have Professor Victor Oketukuchudi, Registrar CEO, Nigeria Institute of Soil Science. Next on my list, I have Dr. Donald Madukwe, Senior Agronomist, OCP Africa. <laughs> Next on my list, I have Dr. Andrew Kwasari, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Agriculture. So on his way. On my list also, I have Professor B.A. Raji, who is the President, Soil Science Society of Nigeria. It is also my pleasure to recognize the Director of Agricultural Land Climate Change Management Services. Okay. Maybe he's still coming. We have the Director of Farm Input Support Services, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Gardening. So you're welcome. We have the Director of Planning Policy Coordination, FMAD. 
Okay, still on this way. We have the director of federal department. So she will join us soon. We'll, see. we'll have Dr. Peter C. Epozo, a member of this governing council. In Asia, he will join us soon. We have Mr. Rasak Adekola, he's also a member of this governing council. You have him here? Okay. I'm also pleased to announce the presence of Dr. Kane Demakinde, Agra Country Manager in Nigeria. We have Mr. Mohammed Salisi Idris, country rep, IFDC. Next to my list is Kensley Uzoma, Tony Blair Institute for Global Change. I hope these ones are still coming. We also have Malam Samaila Yusuf, Tony Blair. for global change. Representative Science and Technology represented in the persons of Dr. Jibril Suli. You're welcome. We also have Engineer McQueen, HL. Okay. We have Engineer Chukuma, GO. All representing the Minister of Science and Tech. We also want to recognize the presence of Professor James Yayoba. Okay. We also have in our list Professor James A. Abideron. So you are welcome. Happy to have you around. We also have Professor A. O. Osunde. Professor Osunde, you are welcome, sir. We have Professor Trenchard Ibia. You are highly welcome. We have Professor Damian Asawalam on his way short. That we have the HOD Department of Soil Science, University of Abuja. Can you join us soon? We also have the HOD Department of Soil Science, Nasrawa State University. We have the Dean, Faculty of Agriculture. Nasarawa State University. And last in my list is Dr. Innocent Mokoma Onyepere, the head of station. And you're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. You are all welcome to this. Okay. May we recognize the presence of Dr. Peter C. Eposo. He's a member of this government council. You are highly welcome, sir. We sincerely welcome you. I'd like to hand over the mic to Mrs. Mary to tell us why we are here. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, why are we here? By way of introduction, OCP Africa Fertilizers Nigeria Limited is a limited liability company incorporated under the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria with Mr. Hetiti Mohammed as the managing director. And he is ably represented here by Mr. Kola Wale Asana Olua. Sorry. Oluwatoba Asana, I'm sorry for that mix up. Oluwatoba Asana is representing Mr. Caleb Uso, country manager OCB Africa at today's signing ceremony. The Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, on the other hand, is an agency of government under the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, established by the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science Establishment Act of 2017. NIS is duly represented here by Professor Victor Okechukuchuli as the Registrar CEO. 
Now, the two parties share a common interest in developing sustainable and innovative solutions to address key barriers to the full realization of the agricultural growth potential in Nigeria. To this end, both parties have expressed their mutual interest in working on the dissemination of innovation and technologies for managing problematic soils in Nigeria. OCP Africa undertakes to provide for the partner the funding for the conduct of the project in accordance with the terms of this agreement. OCP Africa will also provide any relevant information and assistance which are reasonably necessary to conduct the project, particularly with respect to the types of materials needed for the project. In addition, a team from OCP Africa will participate in the monitoring and the follow-up of the project activities. NIS, on the other hand, undertakes NIS here, I mean Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, undertakes to organize and conduct stakeholders' inception workshop and technical committee meetings. It will also carry out soil sampling and analysis if necessary, and according to the representativeness of the samples already collected, conduct or field assessment for data collection and analysis, formulate and val validate appropriate balanced blends of fertilizers for problematic soils conduct capacity building workshops for farmers and extension agents. Conduct an end of project workshop. Create awareness and ensure the successful deployment of the innovation within Nigeria and amongst Nigerian farmers for the realization of site-specific nutrient recommendations. Organize few days during the key steps of the growth to disseminate best agricultural practices to farmers and show them the importance of soil analysis with respect to problematic soils. In close collaboration with OCP Africa, provide the overall scientific technical coordination and supervision of the project and provide overall technical direction in reliance on the agricultural scientific expertise. Upon request by OCP Africa, prepare the research proposal in close collaboration with OCP Africa with the details of the experimental procedure. Nominate scientists to ensure the supervision, design, and the conduct of validation trials for the developed fertilizer recommendations in the selected areas with the participation of OCP Africa team. Nominate scientists to ensure the supervision, design, and conduct of validation trials for the developed fertilizer recommendations in the selected areas with the participation of OCP Africa team. Undertake the validation of the materials provided by OCP Africa, the planning, the preparing, and conducting of the fertilizer validation trials. Manage the projects to be executed, collect and handle relevant data with regards to fertilizer development and validation trials with the materials. Upon request by OCP Africa, prepare the research proposal in close collaboration with OCP Africa with the details of the experimental procedure. NIS will nominate scientists to ensure the design and the conduct of omission trials to develop our own fertilizer recommendations in the selected areas and for targeted groups, crops, with the participation of OCP Africa team. Ensure that soil and plant samples are collected, processed, and analyzed at a fee and laboratory recommended by OCP Africa. NIS will make available research facilities and human resources needed in order to perform the planned activities and training manuals for main crops production in Nigeria. That is the extension agent licenses and authorizations from local government authorities and communities that may be required for the conduct of the project. NIS will facilitate access for OCP Africa to visit the laboratory and field activities for the purpose of following up and evaluating the work carried out for the project. This access will enable OCP Africa to conduct at any reasonably time, reasonable time and at OCP Africa's sole discretion and expense any such activity that OCP Africa is necessary for project follow-up. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I'd like to invite the two parties, OCP Africa, and needs to sign the MOU. Put your hands together. 
as we are waiting for the signing, we are happy to announce the presence of the following people here. The HOD Department of Soil Science, University of Abuja. Ma'am, we're happy to have you around. We also have Barista Nike Ubube, the Clark House Committee on Agricolages and Institution. You are welcome, ma'am. And lastly, we have Professor Ayu. Consultant to the house to come. Sign this agreement on behalf of the Third Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development for the good of our farmers in Nigeria. Thank you. It is my pleasure to call on the registrar, the CEO, Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, in the person of Professor Victor Ochude, to give us the point and brief on disseminating innovation and technology for managing problematic soils in Nigeria. Prof. Can we give him a round of applause as he comes? I'm so shaking. Nia Farah. Nia Farah. Just stay here. I'm doing it. Yes. Nina. Okay. I want to be doing the changing of state.
Where's the microphone? Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to stand on the protocol that has already been established. Our permanent secretary, the chairman, house committee, um, colleges and institutions. My presentation is in every folder. I'm going to speak on what the project is all about. The structure of my present project with few assessments. Combination of appropriate balance for lesser lengths, demonstration, diffusion, and sensitization, capacity building that technical by stopping at state level. This is the details of what the MC read out before the signing of the agreement. Then we'll look at major outputs. Who are the primary beneficiaries of this project? NIS is not alone. We have partners and we have collaborators. The overall goal of the project is to improve soil quality and sustainability and increase agricultural productivity through effective sustainable management. of problematic soils. What? They are acid soils, alkaline, and solid in places where they exist. The first objective of field assessment is a field assessment of soil fertility status. This has to be done by carrying out soil surveys, that is fertility surveys were referring to data collection, analysis of samples using appropriate methods in target areas to promote formulation of crop and sites, specific fertilizer blends. Currently in Nigeria, market recommendation of fertilizer <clears throat> is the in thing, and this is not right. Fertilizers can only be effective on crops when the targets, when the crop requirement, and then secondly, the soil requirements. In places where phosphorus is already high in the soil, which can only be determined or confirmed through soil analysis, you don't need to. When I say high, high as defined by the critical levels of the nutrients. If you go ahead and apply phosphorus fertilizer in such a soil, you're going to create nutrient imbalance. And people have been wondering, so much investment has been made on fertilizer use in this country, and yet farmers' yields are still very low. This is because the fertilizer regulations are not properly targeted. There are efforts going on to redress the situation. But this project 
will upscale what is currently going on to make sure that, well, let me also mention last week, we were here on an invitation of the Federal Department of Agricultural and Resources and Climate Change to talk about similar approach. Collectively, with this project, there will be turnaround. Turnaround in the sense that farmers will then henceforth get fertilizers that are meant for their soils and for their crops. Fertilizer that is suitable for maize will not be suitable for leguminous crops. So let's take note. There will be interpretation and dissemination of research findings to farmers for improved production. Of course, when we generate data, you don't give it to yourselves. Through extension agents, what is also happening at the Ministry of Agriculture, the current Ministry of Agriculture, is doing a lot to promote extension, train extension agents so that they will deliver to farmers improved technologies that will turn around their fortune and make farming profitable. We're going to promote rapid sensibility of high quality soil through scientific methods and what, what I want to get about research, you know, because if you don't conduct research, then you will not come up with innovations that will change the status quo. Distribute distribution and capacity building on the use of sustainable soil management tools, such as the soil test kits that provide quick and reliable on-farm results of tested soils. Presently, the Nigerian Institute of Soil Science is promoting the use of soil test kits at the zonal level. The zonal coordinators of the institute are here. We're going to work with land resources to make sure that soil test kits that can do a quick analysis of soils. So you don't have to wait. Farmers don't have to take the samples to ABU's area, which is so many kilometers away, you know, to analyze their soils. Extension agents will be trained to do a quick analysis, more reliable analysis that will give reliable results for them to formulate appropriate fertilizer that will impact positively on their farms. All of these, the Soil Science Society of Nigeria, in collaboration, working with the, Nigeria, the Soil Science Society of Nigeria and the Institute, sorry, Soil Science of Nigeria is the mother society of the Institute. The society gave birth to the Institute. So, what we're going to do a baseline surveys. In fact, everything we're doing under this project is in collaboration with the society. What am I talking about? All members of the institutes are members of the Social Society of Nigeria, so we're the same thing. Now, the intervention states across the six jubilees of the country. In the southeast, for this particular project, with time, it will be expanded, it will be upscaled. We have Anambra and Abia. In the south, south, we have Bayansa and Yakwemon. In the southwest, Ekiti State and Ubu. In the north central, that's Raw State and Kogi State. In the northwest, we have Sokoto and Kebi. In the northeast, Taraba and Mugombe. This is with the aim of gathering or a compendium of gaps and of what? Well, soil data to support the effective, to support the development of effective soil management practices. I've already mentioned the crop and site specific fertilizer lens. Next. 
While formulation of appropriate blends will be based on soil analysis. Next, the on-farm demonstration will target crops such as rice, beans, cassava, and vegetable crops. Next, the total number of demonstrations that will be established was 360. The technology like fusion and sensitization will follow the normal procedure, sound interpretation recommendation, and dissemination of findings from the demonstration plots managed. The normal thing, when there are obvious signs of response of treatment by crops, will bring farmers. That is called the farmer's field day. There will be exchange of farmers from one demonstration plot to the other. They are all part of learning process. The private sector financial institutions and policy makers <clears throat> will be involved in all that we're going to do because at the end of the day, we'll expect the banks to support farmers. Otherwise, you develop technologies, farmers will not have the means. So the banks from the beginning, and you mentioned it, but they are part of this project. For success stories, we expect the banks to support farmers so that they will upscale, you know, the technologies developed, and that will translate to increase productivity, more revenue to farmers and that will encourage farmers to remain in business. Yeah, next. Why capacity building and pension dates? We're going to conduct a lot of trainings of ADPs and uh, officials of the State Ministry of Agriculture. So that when we when the project ends, they will continue. That's part of the sustainability plan. Well built in, into the projects. Most projects come in for one or two years, and when they leave, ah, uh, everything goes down. And farmers will say, ah, I wish if it were those days when the World Bank was here. If it were those days, we will make sure that we'll carry the state governments along with us. Whatever findings we produce will be part of the policy of state governments. So that when one administration leaves, it will not go. Our findings, our efforts will not go with that administration because it's already been documented. So the National Assembly of the States we have mentioned will be part of the monitoring of all the projects so that they will reflect it as policies in policy documents and cultural policy documents of the states for continuity. It's all part of capacity building. The um, good agricultural practices is not just fertilizer. The fertilizer alone will not do it. When is it appropriate to plant? What varieties are appropriate for those areas? What about the agricultural, the agronomic practices? All this will be taught to farmers. And that goes right up to harvesting and post-harvesting. So it's a whole chain. Yes, we are soil fertility experts, or we're going to work with our colleagues along the line in the chain to make sure that from production to marketing are all taken care of. That is part of the empowerment that we're going to give to farmers. Next, this is the inception workshop. Monitoring. I've mentioned those who are going to be involved in monitoring. Continue. The green brown days, the number of demonstrations, these are all major outputs 
that I've already mentioned, the production of manuals, publications, scientific publications will be part of it. Well, the data bank of extension agents, since extension agents and agriculture officers are going to be involved, of course, we have proper documentation of all the extension agents in the states that are part of the project for continuity. The number of workshops that we organize, yes, we organize one now. At the end of the project, we're going to have another one where we will share the findings with policymakers, financial institutions, the NGO civil society, so that uh, becomes a living memory. Next. While well, talking about, I've mentioned the primary beneficiaries, the farmers, state governments, um, all those who are related, stakeholders that are interested in agriculture, wood production and financing. Well, who are our partners? We have zero research institutes, Vadegin, Gun, we have the National Root Crop Research Institute, NCRI, Innocent is here. We have the Federal Department of Land Resources, Agricultural Land Resources and Climate Change. The director is here. He has been fully briefed. We have the Fund Input Support Services Department. The director is here. In general, he has been fully briefed on the role they will play. Then the National Program for Food Security in the Ministry of Agriculture. This is one project that has a lot of success stories to tell. So um, that project, I, I, I'm praying that the ministry supports, the PAPSEC is here, that the ministry supports this project, because this project has been a lot of impact over the past, uh, I mean, two decades or so. I'm aware that the offices of this project in the States are still there with staff, so they will play a major role in workshop, in monitoring, and policy formulation. Then the ADPs have already mentioned for the two states in this first phase of the project. I've mentioned the policy makers at the states and the federal level. Community based organizations has also been mentioned. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. We sincerely thank you, Professor Victor Tudor, for that brief. Please, can we give him a round of applause for that wonderful presentation? It's time for us to listen to the statement of commitments by OCP Africa. We want to invite uh, Mr. Kelly Puso, the country manager in Nigeria and the Deputy Managing Director, OCB Africa. But today he's represented by Mr. Oluwa Toba Asana. And welcome to Good morning, the Chairman Senate Committee on Agriculture, the Chairman House Committee on Agriculture, the House Committee Chairman of Colleges of and Institutions, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, all present commissioners of agriculture from Ekiti State, Ogun, Sokoto, and Cardinal States. Uh, please permit me to stay on the existing protocol. Um, my name is Oluwa Tobashana. I represent uh, Mr. Klebusa, the country manager for OCP Africa. Uh, I welcome you all to this auspicious occasion, the reception workshop organized by OCP Africa and the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, NIST, to mark the kickoff of the project, disseminating inno innovative technologies for managing problematic soils in Nigeria. 
I am particularly elated that today's event is yet another demonstration of OCP Africa's avowed commitment to see to the development of Nigeria's agricultural ecosystem. We know that the average productivity per hectare of farmlands in Nigeria is very low and has been attributed mostly to soil conditions. This is this invariably is one of the reasons for food insecurity and poverty within the farming community in Nigeria. Problematic soils come in one or two of acidic or alkaline or saline soils. They are soils in which plant root system does not grow normally due to toxic hydrogen ions. Permeability of plant membranes is adversely affected due to the low soil pH. Enzyme actions may be altered since they are sensitive to pH fluctuations. There are soils in which aluminum, manganese, and iron are available in toxic quantities. In problematic soils, phosphorus gets immobilized and its availability is reduced. And most of the activities of beneficial reorganisms like Hazotobacter and Noduformi bacteria of legumes are adversely affected in acidic as acidity increases. Management of problematic soils should be directed towards enhanced crop productivity, either through addition of soil amendments to correct the anomalies, or by manipulating the agronomic practices depending upon the climatic and edaphatic conditions. However, this calls for a multidisciplinary approach. Agronomy should be considered, breeding should be considered, nutrition should be considered, as it is required to breed system types of the different locations, most of an aluminum toxicity. There is therefore a dire need to maintain a good soil earth for increased and sustained agricultural production. Soil X, which is often referred to as soil quality, is the continued capacity of soil to function as a vital living ecosystem that sustains plants, animals, and humans. Without the soil, humans cannot survive. This definition speaks to the importance of this project, managing soils so that they are sustainable Managing soils so that they are sustainable for future generation is a collective responsibility, and there is no better time to rise to the challenge than this time. We understand the enormity of this initiative and applaud the dedication of NIS to see it through with OCP Africa. The outcome of this initiative is expected to impact on the growth of agriculture in Nigeria generally. We have by call on all stakeholders in agriculture, governments, donor agencies, developmental agencies, farmers, and the family community as a whole to support this large objective uh, project as it requires the collective effort of all to achieve its aim. So this project aligns with all our numerous other OCP Africa farmer-centric uh, projects aimed at bringing precision to practice of agriculture in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. Some of our farmers, our farmer centric projects include the OCP School Lab, Soil Survey and Specialty Fertilizer Development, Digital Soil Mapping, and Enhancing Distribution of Farm Inputs to underserved farming communities through our farm and fortune hubs across the country. We realize that beyond the supply of fertilizers and other farm inputs, there is the need to bridge the education gap by providing our extension workers with the necessary capacity to guide our farmers. This includes, but not limited to, the knowledge and management of problematic soils via sustainable agronomic practices. 
We appreciate our technical partner, NIS, the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, for proposing this project and offering to provide all necessary technical support towards making the project a reality. We as well use this opportunity to assure everybody here present today our commitment towards the realization of this project and partnership of in Nigeria. We express our sincere gratitude to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, especially the Department of Farm Inputs Support Services for the enormous support that we have enjoyed on this project and all our other projects in OCP Africa. I welcome you all once again to this workshop where workable solutions will be provided towards solving the issues of problematic soils in Nigeria and our farmers can be happy with their yields. We feed this soil to feed the planet. Thank you for your time. We appreciate the part you play. It is time for us to enjoy the good news messages. And first, we'll be listening to Honorable Monil Baba Dana Gundi, the Chairman House Committee on Colleges and Institutions, to give us the first good news message. Can we give him? The registered, the representative manager of OCP, directors, other distinguished by the guests on the high table, participants. Good morning. and by the press of cultural colleges and institutions. Nigerian Institute of Soil Science is oversight led by the committee. And I would like to read the book. I'm honored to be invited to present a good message at this auspicious occasion. Let's First, congratulations and OCP for the laudable initiative by working together to find the problem solved. I'm glad to know that the partnership will bring about improved dissemination of innovation and technology. As a farmer, I know that saline and alkali soils are the my brother the country had to contend had to contend with acid soils and erosion due largely to heavy rainfall regime. What are love soils and high water table are twin problems that reduce the productivity of soils in Nigeria, desert encroachment, and aridity 
are equally major problems, particularly in states bordering Niger and Chad republics. Good arable lands are lost annually to desert encroachment. I would like to use this opportunity to call on the federal government of Nigeria to address this problem promptly to save communities affected by this problem. The amelioration and management of problem soil will no doubt result in considerable improvement of crop yields and consequently increased boot security. The technologies and innovation should be scaled up to reach as many farmers as possible. To a small scale farmer, today's event means reduced poverty, increased household income, and employment opportunities through more land becoming available for production. My committee will continue to collaborate with the NISS and OCB to make laws that will positively impact on agricultural growth and development in Nigeria. We shall continue to follow up to ensure full implementation of the terms of agreements by both you through appropriate oversight. Nigeria has the capacity not only to be disturbed, but the whole of the West African sovereignty. We shall ensure that all agricultural potentials are exploited to achieve food security for the country. I wish you successful deliberations of work plan and other deliverables that will ensure the success of the project. Thank you very much. Uh, before I sit down, I have just, as from my speech, I have observed from the targeted areas that you intend to conduct the research. I have mentioned one of the problem areas in Nigeria where we have desert encroachment, especially if you take the northeastern part of the country. When you are selecting the uh, states, you took Taraba and Gombe, which are much more productive, one of the most productive areas in Nigeria as a farmer without telling me the condition of the soils. What I've been. And we know some of the problematic ones. You listed. So I think there is need for the uh, institute and the other partners to look at some of these places so that we can address the country from end to end so that we will have a clear idea of what is happening. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Honorable Dan Agundi. We appreciate your goodwill message. We still have another goodwill message by Haja Hanima Lawa, the Honorable Commissioner of Agriculture of Adina State, represented by Malam Yao Kasim. Ah, you are welcome. The Chairman of the Commission, please permit me to stand on the existing protocol. My commission, I wanted to be here up to 4, 4 p.m. Yesterday, yesterday, but due to ties activities in her office, she was not able to be here. But she was with a good message. Good morning, good, uh, distinguished participants. The Kaduna State Government is imposed by the Nigerian Institute of Soil Science of the Federal Minister of Agriculture. And the 
OCP of the fertilizer admitted the soil nutrient depletion of population increase of coal's per capita puts production to decrease over the past 30 years in the sub Saharan Africa. The importance of improving the productivity of the cropping system while well, maintaining or improving the soil fertility cannot be overemphasized, especially in this pandemic era. It is therefore important that uh, we join hands together in developing the sustainable solution that will ensure the desired growth in the agricultural sector. On that account, I wish to extend the gratitude of the Kaduna State Government to the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science and OCP. Africa Fertilizer Limited for initiating this laudable project that is aimed at addressing the numerous challenges facing the Nigerian soils. This will no doubt transform food and nutrition security, socioeconomic development, as well as as well as public safety and national security. We rest assured that Kaduna State will leave no stone on turn in realizing the goods of this Oslo's project. The line with the policy collection. A final note the Kaduna State is committed to the expansion of agricultural production. The state, and we are optimistic that uh, the, good, the goals and objective of the, the Minister Innovation and Technology for Managing Romantic Soils in Nigeria are achieved. With the collective effort of all stakeholders in the sector, wishing you all a productive convening and thank you. Uh, from my own side, being in the system in, from Kaduna State, I was in the ADP as a program uh, program manager, and now the director of the ADP. I think it has in the extension activities. Now, the awareness is now in the rural areas that uh, that blanket recommendation we used to give them that uh, six bags of NPK to one hectare or two bags of urea to one hectare is no longer true because there is a test or an analysis done in a one woman farm. We answer. How many bags do you apply here? She says she apply only six bags of fertilizer NPK as a first dose. Then she added up what during the other of she apply two bags of urea. And what do you used to have in one hectare? She said she used to have 18 bags, sometimes 20 bags. But the analysis. That is the solution after the soil test analysis said that uh, she used, she's supposed to use nine bags of uh, NPK and uh, four bags of uh, urea because she has been using the land for so many years and the same crop, maize, 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 all the time. You know the habit of maize. So that very year, she followed that. I think the OCP has assisted her with some little bags so that they can they will make sure they follow the directives given to her. So she was able to get what eight bags of her maize at that first year. And by so doing, our brothers from Bauchi come to Kaduna to see how they can reach to OCP. After putting them through, OCP are there in Bochi. Then our 
brothers and our kids from Kano they come they say that they want to join us because you know we used to meet even Kano so they came with OCP and Chigawa and the ODA and the production there is now different from what they used to get I'm sorry if uh, honorable you know whenever I see you there we used to say much about you from Kano <laughs> so don't mind me. I'm not welcome. So I'm just trying to say this is welcome, you know, idea and initiative. The population of the country is increasing too much. Most of the northern part. If we cannot feed ourselves with this usage of same oh, uh, using this uh or whatever without knowing even the quality and the standard we are sold. We are not going anywhere. And this chart, Nigeria and uh, Cameroon, in fact, they depend on Nigeria. They depend on what we eat. So the moment you are not producing more, you continue to have a problem. But I think the answer, despite the challenges, uh, we have to move from uh, just soil uh, analysis and given solution to it. If you know the soil analysis or the your soil strength, I think it's good to go or regenerate, regenerate to agriculture or regenerate to agriculture. That is, let us go back to check our uh, farming system because the farming system will have some challenges there. You see, all those things that uh, we do it right from the beginning what we saw apparently and the people to put our uh, farmers through are no longer there who are expected essential agent to just serve 1,000 farm farmers but most states now you see that essential agent is serving five to nine thousand farmers which is not possible and also the institution these the schools that our children are graduating now what the schools are giving them is not enough Maybe you have to go there to know what these people are giving and what they are coming out with. We have been that, in fact, the effort will be defeated. So I think we have to address the extension system, the schools, that the institutes. And now, like in Kaduna State, the farmer cannot just go and see that I'm applying that because I think the whole 23 local governments that we have. And the 255 words, this OCP has touched that place. And uh, luckily enough, we have a support from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation called AGRA, a consortium whereby the National Food Security, the IAR, Zaria, and the FAFSA are there working to see how they can come up with uh, what the others may speak. So thank you very much for what sir. We thank you so much, Malam Kasimu. And we also thank you for the experience and tips you shared with us. We have almost come to the end of this inception workshop. And now it is my honor to invite Dr. Ernest A. Omaihe, the Permanent Secretary of Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Development, to give us his remarks. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning, all. I want to stand on the long list of protocol for those present and those we are told that <laughs> but I most particularly make a session for Dangudi, the chairman of colleges. I've always known his passion for agricultural research and production. 
and it's always with us on occasions like this. And of course, the two teams that brought us together, country director, Dr. Asana, sorry, Mr. Asana, of uh, the OPC, uh, and of course, the registrar of the Nigeria Institute of, of Soil Science, Professor Chude. It is with great pleasure I welcome you all to this essential workshop on disseminating innovation and technologies for managing problematic soils in Nigeria. The proposed project is focusing on correction, the correction of problematic soils for disseminating technologies for managing them. There is undisputed evidence that we have large areas of plants in Nigeria with soils that are no longer productive or have very little very low productivity. We have the dry land soils in the extreme northern part of the country and the wetlands and acid sands in the south. In most cases, such soils are either abandoned by farmers or used for cropping with very poor returns. This initiative will certainly address these problems and restore the productive capacity of the soils in this category. We are all aware that the areas of land available for farming in the country is not increasing because of the heavy pressure on land for many non-agricultural purposes as a result of a rapidly growing population. We therefore have to explore ways and means of reclaiming our previously productive arable lands and take necessary steps to prevent abandonment of farmlands as a result of low productivity. We need to ease the pains and drudgery experienced by our farmers who are compared to cultivate these problematic soils. Our agriculture suffers from many limitations, most of which are environmental in nature, while others are anthropogenic. Major soil constraints, which include soil erosion, salinity, flooding, declining soil fertility, desertification, leaching of nutrients, etc., reduce the productivity of our soils. In addition, the issue of problematic soils is also there to contend with. Such soils include those with permeability problems, those with surface crusting, and those with hard palm in the subsoil. Others include shadow soils, heavy clay soils, and salt affected soils. When these groups of soils are used for crop production, it pains and drudgery the farmer will experience and resultant poor output, as I imagine. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development is making concerted efforts to address the problems of our farmers, particularly in the area in the way these problems affect resource poor smallholders. Of major concern is the suitability of our soils for the cultivation of crops in locations with comparative advantage. This project on disseminating innovation and technologies for managing problematic soils in Nigeria is therefore important to us because it holds immense potentials for the agricultural sector. The methodologies for the proposed project to focus on those technologies that would address the challenges of problematic soils in agriculture, why not overlooking the root causes? Please bear in mind the need to preserve our environment as you deploy these technologies and innovations for soil amelioration so that our ecosystem is not adversely affected. The technologies to be introduced should be such that our farmers can easily adopt and implement at very minimal cost. Permit me to use this opportunity to commend the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science for this bold initiative, which will be implemented in collaboration with OCP Africa, a company with international reputation in agricultural innovations. This project will go a long way in complementing the renewed efforts of the ministry aimed at introducing modern farming techniques to our farmers and empowering them to enable rapid adoption. We need to educate our farmers continuously on the importance of observing land use and land sustainability requirements as it relates to the choice of crops to be planted in a given location. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, participants, 
I wish you positive, I wish us positive outcomes in our deliberations, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you so very much, Dr. Ernest Omaihi, the permanent secretary, permanent secretary, Federal Minister of Agriculture, for honoring this invitation and for those warm remarks. Thank you so much, sir. The floor is now open for general discussions. We want to share our concerns, contributions, tips. So the floor is open. We want to listen to us. Okay. Okay. Group photograph. Yeah. I think this place is nice. So that command has come. Yes, Honorable. Inception workshop is not over yet. We still have two minutes. We're told that lunch will be ready at 12 30, so let's talk. 12 30. But if you, if you don't want to take lunch, just read a presentation that we can eat your food. <laughs> Uh, Professor Waka, where are you going to? 
Professor Waka, it's your turn to make a comment, please. Okay. According to the program. Is that so? Yes. Um, you're all welcome. Now, I want to compliment uh, this and those people for this uh, exercise. For this exercise. See, one of the problems of the uh, world, especially in Nigeria, especially in Nigeria, because if you go to Ghana, it's not like that. If you go to Tanzania, it's not like that. If you go to Kenya, far, far ahead of us, uh, we have mistakenly agreed or taken that Soils are inexhaustible. In fact, in those days, in the time when the time of um, the regions, there was an expression that the soils in the northern Nigeria are inexhaustible. But from what we are seeing today, it is not correct. Population has grown and will continue to grow. The space will continue to diminish. So I want to thank the NIST and the OCP for this exercise. The source we are talking about is a living entity, a living entity indeed. And it is the entity because it is living, that's why it sustains life on earth. I challenge some people. Earth is one of the planets. This is the other one and see where you are going to see soil. You may see materials, some materials. But there are no soils because there's no life there. We need to take care of our soils in anything we are doing, especially in the area of food production. Without food, it is impossible for us to for life to exist. Water is, is needed quite right. Air is needed quite right. But without food, without food, it is highly impossible. And where do we produce the food? On the soils. Somebody was trying to tell me about the hydrophonic. Let me tell you, all those is, uh, is, 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 is they, they are man-made and will suffer what man makes. Suffer the same way. They are trying to produce human beings. But those human beings being produced will be very different from the ones that God uh, 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 prepared through the biological ways. Now, what am I trying to say? We need to know our soils. We need to manage the soils. I can remember in those days, or just some years ago, there was a, a, an organization known as a NISDAM, North East Arizona Development uh, Project. They so manage the soils in the northeast that we almost arrested desert encroachment. Almost. How do we do it? Just called upon the scientists around. University of uh, Medugri uh, 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 was almost there was uh, the, 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 the 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 famous university around that place. Kano was just uh, starting. Zero was too far. So, Center for Arizona Studies was situated in Meduguri. They made use of the soil scientists. Now, what were we doing? We went, worked with the farmers, worked with the farmers. 
looked at their soils. Experiment, made experiments with the farmers. Told them how to use if, uh, apply fertilizers. Crop, uh, uh, crop uh, uh, experiments done with the, with the farmers. In fact, NISDAP almost, almost uh, uh, stopped, stopped hunger, almost stopped uh, poverty in the Northeast. It's not because of uh, political uh, 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 disagreement between the sponsors, EU and uh, the Nigerian government there. It was just simple. Getting the scientists, they got scientists from Europe and they got some scientists from, from Nigeria. That is the same thing we are trying to do now. Look at the soils. What do they need? What do they require? And fought, and fought aridity. We incorporated every farmer had what to do. The 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 there was a little problem at the initial stage. The others were a problem, but it was solved. Because we had to make the farmers understand that uh, food items, the, 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 the animals need food, need water. So we incorporated them into land use. How to manage, how we want to farm. We attached them to their and, their, and, their, and, their, and, their, and grace. Only when and then you fertilize the animals, you fertilize the ground. Then Lisa will, will come in and then harrow, harrow or plow the whole flesh to incorporate the disease. We are using more of a, 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 a organic fertilizers than, than, the, than the, or we combine the organic fertilizers with the, with the inorganic fertilizers. Unfortunately, Boko Haram came in. And that, that was the, the, the sort of place. Students, once they graduate from there, they go back to their villages and work in the farms with the modern technology given to them. And that is what we're supposed to be doing in Nigeria today. The population is growing very fast, very fast. The land is not increasing. Instead, the last phase for farming is decreasing because of uh, the population. So please, uh, this is a good arrangement. Fertilizers cannot be used indiscriminately. You have to know. It is like you eating food. You don't go to um, the restaurant and, and then start eating uh, uh, food full of salt or without salt. It is impossible. Or drink tea. Drink tea that they, they, they put salt into it. No. The food must be in a way that we nourish the, the human body. And that is what soil requires. We should understand our soils. Understand the type of fertilizer that we are going to give to it. We just don't apply uh, fertilizers blindly like that. Blanket application. NPK, you see the farmers apply it. You need to understand what type of soil is this? What, what are the limitations? What, what, are the, what does the soil require? What, what do the plants need before you, 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 you start making a fertilizer? Fertilizer should not be the same thing you apply in a wet area. You apply the same thing in the, in the, in the dry area. Or what you apply in beans, you go and apply it in the, in the, in the, in the, in the base. No! All these plants need their type of fertilizers. And we have to understand the soil before we make the fertilizers. So I want to thank uh, this for this. I want to thank OCP. Please, we need to work hand in hand. And again, the, now that the, it's unfortunate, I, I expected that neither should be here. Neither should be here. They are now trying to uh, 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 create uh, farmers or help farmers in the, in the different uh, 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 states, but they, they need to work with uh, they need to work with uh, uh, with uh, FDLR because we are working, we are fighting the same war, war against the hunger, a war against the environmental uh, degradation. Thank you very much.
we thank Professor Mwaka for his in-depth uh, explanation on the importance of soil. We heard that soil is a living thing. It moves very slowly, changing and growing all the time. And just like every other living thing, soil breathes and it needs air and water to stay alive. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Mwaka, once more. At this juncture, I'd like to call on OCP Africa to take the floor, to tell us more about themselves and what they are doing. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for OCP Africa. Good afternoon once again. Um, Donald Maduka is my name. I want to stand on existing or already established protocols. While we are seated, and um, we would like to tell you a little more about OCP Africa. We know and understand that the name OCP is becoming to be, is becoming a household name but a lot of other persons who have not dealt with us closely may not understand what OCP is all about. Some people mistake the OCP for OPC and other others. It is okay. OCP is just an acronym whose uh, French, which meaning is um, a phosphate police or the custodian of phosphate. In French, they said it's office sheriffian de phosphate, uh, which means the office in charge of our phosphate. OCP Africa is a subsidiary of a Moroccan company, which has been involved in the business of um, phosphate mining and uh, production of uh, the derivatives of phosphate for over hundred years now, trying to concentrate in Africa, trying to bring uh, tailored solutions to Africa. The subsidiary OCP Africa was conceived in 2016. As important as Nigeria is, in that same 2016, OCP Africa came to Nigeria, they registered as an entity, and since then, OCP Africa has tried to not stand as a company who is interested in making of it what we know. OCP Africa has shown committed efforts to better the lot of Nigerian farmers through development of the entire agricultural of space. OCP has been involved in a lot of activities cutting across education, research, market development, and uh, quality product introduction. What am I trying to say? We looked inwards and we looked around Nigeria and we saw that apart from providing the farm inputs, maybe the fertilizer, there are other uh, factors that are affecting the farmers' productivity, especially education. Education affects the farmers so much. When they don't know the right, the right to use the fertilizer, and the farmers do not know the right quantity to use, or even how to place the fertilizer or we have to get these inputs or what or what a good or quality input is OCP came up with an initiative we call the agri booster which is um end-to-end -end, um initiative that brings brought different partners input partners um financiers of takers and all that so it will be agri booster the market is ready for the farmer the education is there for them and uh, the input is 
already provided and then the farmers were happy. They got loans to get inputs and now uh, they paid back and it was a success in the first year. And since then, OCP have continued to assist farmers through that initiative and we have reached over 60,000 farmers through the agri Booster project as of today and we are still moving on. When we looked at again, we found out that Nigeria is an agrarian community. However, where the core agricultural activities are happening, there has been a lot of um, difficulties for the farmers to assess quality inputs at the right time. Sometimes inputs arrive at, after planting or during weeding or during, you know, when they're about to harvest. It's a major problem. And sometimes the farmers don't go to the field when they're supposed to because they've not seen the seeds, they've not seen fertilizer. So RCP Africa decided to create what we used to call a one-stop shop. We call it Farm and Fortune Help. This one-stop shop is meant to serve on the, uh, on the south areas in these hinterlands, provide them with farm inputs, not just fertilizers. We collaborate with other partners who, uh, who provide big seeds, quality seeds, who provide uh, chemicals, the uh, crop protection products. They're also available. And also we incorporate training in these centers so that farmers can be taught how and when to use all these inputs. We do not just provide them for them. Apart from providing these uh, farm and fortune hubs, we looked at it. Okay, even though we have cited this hub, it's hard to keep away from this. So we come up with what we call the agri-promoters. Today, the agri-promoters are an extension of the farm and fortune hub. All they do is to further drive down the input to other communities. And as well, they work as extension agents as well because they are trained to provide farmers with information, um, guidance through the farming season. And today we are looking at, we have about 54 of these farm and fortune hubs and OCP is looking all to distributing this across the country. We're looking at about 500 of these by the end of 2025, uh, by the grace of God. And uh, it's a place where we don't hope to run ourselves. It's going to, we're thinking about how we are going to manage this with partners and then make sure it does not derail from the objectives as we progress. CP did not just do that. We have been working with local institutions to make sure that we provide performant fertilizers that are tailored to ecologies around the country. And uh, a lot of us will attest to that. Some research institutes have been working with us closely and uh, like the Institute of Agricultural Research and Training in the Badon, like the NIFO, the NIHOT, the CREAM, we've been working together. And then we've been trying to bring different solutions to various farmers problems that are perceived within the country. We have a lot of other functions we do that are tailored, we call them farmer-centric projects, like we mentioned in the commitment speech. We have our school lab, and to support the school lab, last year OCB, in collaboration with ATB Ubochi, trained 20 young leaders who were equipped or empowered with um, digital soil testing uh, kits. And they were given training that cuts across soil testing, sampling testing, and the uh, interpretation of results and recommendation, and to uh, even marketing and other aspects of agriculture because they will be liaising with farmers. They will move around the community. That program, EME, was actually created to empower youths who have strong desire in agriculture, 
what you need to make a living out of it. It is not um, a free for service uh, initiative. The youths are expected to conduct soil tests, recommendation at a fee that is affordable by farmers in rural communities. And also, we are looking at expanding this email so that across the zones, we will have them work farmers. All the uh, production are also in line with what we are discussing today. Part of other projects we do today includes strengthening capacities of blended plants through training, which we have conducted the first in 2019. And last year, we could not due to the COVID situation. We bring experts to talk to blending plants and on issues bordering on micronutrients nutrient and others as it affects fertilizer production and uh, um, food uh, enhancement with all these micronutrients. We also have decided a long time now to show a blending, uh, instead of the art blending plant in Nigeria, and uh, in collaboration with some state governments, we have cited one in Ogun State, another in Kaduna, and the third is ongoing also in um, Sokoto State. Hopefully, by the end of this year, we should have uh, opened one of the uh, blending plants so that we can champion as well uh, as we have been doing the blending of specialty uh, fertilizer formulations. Talking about special formul uh, specialty formulations, in conjunction with IITA and AFSIS in 2016, 2017, and 2018, we were able to develop performance fertilizer for maize production. This we did across about eight um, maize growing states in Nigeria. And uh, the, the formulation came about through extensive soil sampling analysis. And all that. We have the results. We don't mind to share with you. We we'll communicate with blended plants as well. Today, we have other projects running that are bigger than this office now that will be discussed in, uh, in future days as we progress with the planning. OCP Africa believes so much in Africa. OCP Africa believes so much in Nigeria. OCP Africa believes that together we will feed the soil and our planet will nourish. Thank you very much. Thank you for sitting. I hope that at this point, we know a little more about OCP Africa beyond the name. OCP is committed to Nigeria agriculture. Thank you very much. Good, I just be reminded of one important thing I shouldn't forget. Sorry, don't penalize me. Okay, to further inform people, uh, farmers and uh, bring stakeholders to deliberate and uh, profile solutions to farmers' uh, problems. We have created a, a television show we call Farm and Fortune. It's a television show that was uh, created as a way of reaching the farmers even in the COVID situation. Even when we are restricted, we cannot go out, we cannot go to the field, we cannot um, call farmers together as we used to do in our school lab. We can still reach them through the media. So we have created, uh, we started with a pilot of a six episodes of television show and about 39 episodes of a radio drama and uh, talk, uh, so not talk show, farm tips, daily tips we give in the morning and evening across about seven radio stations in Nigeria. 
Um, the television show is you know, on NTA uh, every Monday, 5.30 p.m. But the first season is over. We are working on the second season. And uh, we are doing this in partnership with all our collaborators, the IR and T, the, the Peace, uh, NIS, and other partners who have the same burning desire to make sure our farmers succeed, to make sure that food production in Nigeria surpasses self-sufficiency. And I will urge you all to look out for Farm and Fortune Season 2 and always tune into the radio stations who publish the um, frequencies so that you can tune in and listen to the farm, Farmers Daily and also the radio dramas every Saturday. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, more round of applause for Dr. Donald Madikwe. Thank you, Dr. Donald Madikwe, for telling us more about OCP in Africa and all that you do. And from the activities of OCP Africa enumerated by you, I can only say that OCP Africa has become a household name in Nigeria. Thank you very much. I am told that lunch will be served in a few minutes. So uh, while we, what's the name? Ladies and gentlemen, lunch is served. But before we step out to the uh, left side of the hall, out, just outside the hall here, uh, let's take the vote of thanks from Professor B. A. Raji, President, Soil Science Society of Nigeria. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm not to give you any speech. I'm just to thank everyone here for coming and for being part of this inception workshop. That would be very simple, but that would be quite unfair on my part just to do that. Personally, as the president, I think we owe it a duty to OCP Africa. Uh, when Don, uh, Dr. Donald, um, Donald Madwick was giving us more information on the activities of OCP, you will notice that they came into the country just 2016. And within a short period of, let's say, five years, they've already become has called name. Please let's laugh again. As Soil Science Society of Nigeria, Mr. Olu Atova Asana, in the commitment speech, page two, second to the last paragraph, mentioned some of the activities. But let me include one activity which to me is very, very important, but it's omitted, which is capacity building of young soil scientists at our conferences. Please, let's appreciate. For the past two, three years, OCP has already supported young soil scientists to our conferences. 20 of them attended last year. And I think you should include that as part of your annual responsibilities. We quite appreciate you, and we wish that you continue to prosper. So on behalf of all of us, stakeholders in the soil science profession, soil science business, we want to thank OCP from the top, the country representative, through the person we see always, uh, Donald, uh, Dr. Donald, and everyone for the good job you are doing in the field of soil science. 
fertilizer formulation and a host of others which you have mentioned. I also think we should express our appreciation to the National Assembly. Uh, they've always been part of not only making law to better the agricultural sector, but they've always supported all these initiatives physically. And though those who are not here are also appreciated, for that appreciate Honorable Menero Dan Agundi. He was here last week, he's also here, he stayed throughout last week, he's also staying throughout. So thank you very much. Please extend our appreciation to other chairmen of various committees in the National Assembly. We also appreciate the consultant, uh, Professor Ayu Abubakar, to that committee for being here. Uh, we will go to the National uh, Federal Ministry of uh, Agriculture, that is the host, uh, the executive part. So we we'll use that to appreciate the executive arm of the government using their actor, their cultural transformation agenda. We know in the last four or five years, our culture has weakness, a lot of boost. We begin to have the pyramids back. And I think with this, we will have more pyramids, more processing plants. So through the Federal Ministry of Agric, uh, the Permanent Secretary, and the Director of our own post uh, department, and other directors that are here, we want to appreciate you for your commitment to make this program and project successful. All honorable commissioners, there are several of them that were listed, but we want to appreciate the Honorable Commissioner, Minister of Agriculture, Kaduna State, who is uh, represented here by the Director of Agri Services, Mr. Kasimu, and to others commissioners who could not make it, but who, one way or the other, are going to be part and parcel of this project. We thank you and we appreciate you all. Then to needs, council members, Soil scientists, HODs, things that are here, and those who are not yet, there are various stakeholders, the directors and the several research institutes in the various geopolitical zones that are going to be part of this project. We all appreciate all of you and we pray that this becomes successful. Lastly, but not the least, I appreciate all of you, all the stakeholders, everyone that is present here, all the media that have covered this event since morning. I want to, lastly but not the least, appreciate Almighty God who has made it possible for all these activities to come to fruition. We pray that they continue to support us and they continue to enrich the sponsors of this program. To all, we pray in his name. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Raji, for a vote of thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the program. And just before we step out for lunch, may we rise and take the second stanza of the national anthem as a national prayer. Shall we rise, please? <clears throat> oh God of creation, direct our noble course, guide our leaders right, help our youth the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, and living just and true. Great lofty heights attain to build a nation where peace and justice reigns. Thank you very much. Uh, please, we allow our dignitaries on the high table to step out for the lunch first, then we can follow. Hey, so
Thank you. 